Project 8 is about creating a repeat pattern. And in order to do this, you're going to cut out shapes from construction paper. You're going to pick two con uh, construction paper colors. You're going to pick two shapes. You can make the shapes really complicated, but you're going to have to cut out a bunch of them. So my suggestion is that you make them pretty simple. And geometric is about as simple as it gets. You may pick two geometric shapes, but you can't pick two identical squares, for example. You need to have square and a triangle, circle, square, whatever. Um, but they need to be two different shapes or at least two different sizes. So you could actually have a square and a rectangle or two different uh, size triangles, whatever. Uh, but for right now, what I've picked is uh, a square and a triangle. Uh, and I want to show you an example of several different patterns that you could easily make. And there's bunches of options uh, using these. And uh, I'm using Adobe Illustrator for demo purposes. Uh, so my cutting out is going to be making quick copies of them. But it's the same concept. And so you will want a lot of copies before you ever try to figure out your pattern. Um, I don't mean you have to cut all of them out, but you probably want 20 at least of the shapes before you start to figure out what it is that you're doing. So at the moment, I have my um, yellow square and my green triangle, and I've layered them. I've decided that for at least my first demo, um, my unit that I'm starting from is going to be this combo of the square and the triangle. And there are a ton of things I could do even with these guys. So I want to quickly show you one of the simpler repeats that you can come up with, which is to take your item and essentially do a linear repeat where it's one after another after another, and you end up with essentially a long repeating, and then, oops, it helps to get the whole thing, uh, a long repeating row of the item. Um, and so I've got four so far. You can hopefully start to get a feeling for what they're going to look like. I'm going to scoot them down and make a whole lot more of them. Again, a little faster than scissors and construction paper, but the concept is still there. You get a feeling for how that comes together. And then I have one complete row, and I need to fill the rest of the page. And this is where some, some of those options I referred to a moment ago come into play. I could do a repeat that is the same. It's just row after row that are identical. Um, and I've got a tiny gap in between these. Uh, and you could decide with your construction paper if you had a little gap or not. And this obviously is just repeating rows as we go across. And we would fill the page with that and ta-da. So that's the simplest option. We could also, without a whole lot more complexity, do our second row inverted, meaning the first row points up, the second row points down, um, and I accidentally got an extra row in there uh, by copying, but get, you can see those two. Now, where this starts to get a little bit more interesting, and I do think maybe I want to lose the gap there, is when we get into more than the two rows. Because the pattern is slightly more complicated, um, it starts to get a little bit more interesting the more copies that you've got. And, of course, my gaps are not great um, because they sort of break the pattern up a little bit more than I want to. Uh, but you can see that it becomes more intricate because I inverted the row. And so it's got this really interesting sort of crazy um, chevron deal going on. And if I allow the pattern to continue further over, you can see how that continues on. Now, that's basically just second row was inverted, but it was exactly the same pattern. Um, really that I started with. And so that's just two simple options with this and you've got a ton more. I'm going to show you one of the um, other options you could approach. So let's say uh, that you don't just want to start out the front row, the first row the way I did. 
but you want to make it a little bit more complicated. So we saw that by taking the first row and flipping it for the second row, that it gets more interesting. So what happens if we don't even go all the way to um, the second row before we wait to do a flip? We do a flip now, and so we've got up and down. So this becomes our repeating unit now. We've got this, and we repeat that. And we get diamonds instead of the little pyramidy bits that we had um, in the previous iteration. So a lot more interesting, different looking than we had previously. And if we take this row and we repeat, oops, oops, if you don't zoom out of control like I just did a second ago, uh, but we're going to take this and we're going to create that copy and then the copy and the copy and we'll get a screen full of this chevron pattern and again the functional unit wasn't a whole lot more complicated instead of just doing up pointed green triangles the whole way through the first row we flipped the second one so that it's pointed down and then that gave us the diamond as we went up and up and up so that's another option um, and there's a lot more so hopefully that gives you an idea of the really simple repeats. There are some people that are going to want to get a little bit more complicated with the repeat, but I'll show you the same element. So we're going to use as our pieces still that square and still a triangle. We're just going to do it in a little bit of a different way. So I'm going to turn that one off and show you, and I already built this one because it takes a little bit longer to put it together, what this one looks like. So we have our square and then we have our triangles. My spacing isn't perfect, so it's going to be a little bit off, but it gives you an idea. So this is the functional unit, whereas previously, just as a reminder, what we were using as our, quote, main repeat unit was this. In the new version, the repeat's a little bit bigger, where we have the um, square in the center and the triangles around it. And when we duplicate that unit, we end up with something like this. So we end up with this row it's got this sort of funny space in between it. And if we add an extra row, it looks like, oops, wrong row. Let's see, which row was, I can't remember what I was supposed to do next. Nope. All right, let's do, yeah. So we'll fill it in until the whole screen's full. And we end up with something that looks like this. And when we trim it, because you're gonna wanna trim down to the edge of your page, um, there is actually a trim view it looks like this. And so, again, from that pretty basic triangle square, we've got something that is a lot more dynamic. Um, and we've got the sort of wavy lines in between, and we've got an extra diamond that's made from the space between the functional units and so forth. So the idea for this project, again, is you're gonna pick the simplest repeating elements that you can come up with. Two shapes, two colors and make a pattern that completely fills your page. The instructions say start with a two inch shape. That's way too big. You're gonna to need to start a little bit smaller. Um, if I, let's see, how big is this guy? Just so y'all know, let's see. Cause I am actually not sure how big it is. Um, it is in points, awesome. So it's less than an inch. Um, if I changed, my preferences, uh, whatever. Hang on. Seventy-two. Yeah, it's way under an inch. Um, it's about. Yikes! It's pretty small. So three quarters of an inch overall is what my square is looking like. Um, and anyway, get this pattern. I hope that helps as you're coming up with your own.